Hello all you lovely people and welcome to my video today. Today I'm going to be talking about Final Fantasy 16 which has recently released only on PlayStation consoles, PlayStation 5 that too. So it's a next gen exclusive. It's I would say a true next gen exclusive and why do I think so? I'm going to talk all about it in today's video so kindly stick around till the end of the video. Now what I've done for this video is I've collected a bunch of my uh, gameplay footage. I brought them all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the game, my experience overall, as I play this back to you. So I'm also taking a look at this footage after playing the game. And um, it's kind of taking a look at the game again. So it's going to be interesting for me. Hopefully it's going to be interesting for you as well. Now this game is, I would say, a Final Fantasy game for the next generation. Because this is a very different kind of a Final Fantasy game. First of all, the theme is very adult. I mean, not just in terms of uh, adult scenes or anything like that, but uh, the voice, the tone, the story, it's very mature. And speaking of story, I'm going to talk about that very quickly as well. But before I start talking about the story, the characters and all that stuff, can I just say that this game is massive. I mean, in terms of size, scale, presentation, they have really hit the ball out of the park. And they have outdone themselves in terms of the production value of this game. I mean, this game is so good that it feels like a, like an immersive movie. That's how good this is. And it can easily, easily topple any of these summer blockbusters uh, that have come out over the last few years. I mean, that's how good this is in terms of the storytelling aspect. So let's get right into it and talk about the story, the setup, the characters of this particular game. And um, let's get right into it. So the story basically is um, set in this fictional land of Valisthea. That's the setup. And um, you have a lot of mother crystals in this land. You'll come across this term. These are powerful sources of uh, magic and magical energy. So because they have immense power in them, obviously anything which has power in uh, them, it attracts conflict, it attracts war. So this whole universe, this kingdom of Valisthea is, uh, is full of conflict and war. And you play as Cl Clive Rossfield. That's the main protagonist of the game. And you are the shield of Rosaria. Why are you the shield of Rosaria? Because your brother, whom you see here, Joshua, is a dominant, a dominant of fire. So they're these uh, mythical beings, these gigantic creatures like kaijus from these Japanese movies and animes, etc. And these icons, um, I mean, they they have a human host. So Joshua is the host for the icon of fire, and um, his icon is called Phoenix. And there is another icon of fire called Ifrit. I mean, there are many icons in the game, first of all. So there is Rama, there is Shiva, there is Odin. So as you can clearly see, these names, they are all inspired by um, Greek or um, Indian mythology. So you play as Clive Rossfield and you are this determined and I would say a conflicted individual because you're seeking revenge against your brother's killer and it's it's no secret now yeah i mean the game's been out for some time so without getting into too many spoilers i can say that uh yeah in the game they show that joshua has been killed but has he been killed question mark exclamatory mark <laughs> so you grow as a character in this game and uh, you will face a lot of challenges along the way you will also come across a lot of other characters in the game but as a main protagonist your your character is driven by this desire for revenge um, and you want to confront the killer of your brother. So that's the basic premise or the setup of this entire game. And um, in your journey, you will come across other characters as well. And all of these characters, they're extremely well written, excellently voiced. The motion animation is stellar. The voice acting is fantastic, mind-blowing. Even the lip movement is fabulous. In fact, this character, Sid, 
I don't know who has um, done the voice acting, but I mean the depth in his voice, the voice actor. I mean a big shout out to this voice actor. But it's not just Sid, or it's not just Jill. There's um, Benedicta, these other characters as well, who is a negative character, and uh, there's Gav, who adds like this funny touch or humor to it. So, in a nutshell, these are just a few names that I've named right now. But as you progress in the game further, because again. The game's not been out for quite a long time, so I don't want to give too many spoilers away. Now, you obviously are on this quest to seek revenge, but as you progress through the main story, you also have an option of these side quests. Now, these some of these side quests, it's kind of irrelevant to the story, so whether you do them or whether you don't do them, it's completely up to you. It's not going to have like this direct impact on the storyline whatsoever. Speaking of the main story, the main story itself can easily go on for say about 40 to 50 hours. Uh, that's how long this game is. So if you're a fan of these uh, action RPGs like Assassin's Creed or The Witcher, where you can spend hundreds of hours. I mean, I spent over a hundred and oh, comfortably over 180 hours in Assassin's Creed Odyssey alone. <laughs> so that's just Odyssey alone. I think more than 180 hours. I'll just have to look how much time I've spent, but comfortably over 180 hours. And even with Origins, I've spent like 120, 130 hours in Origins. And then there's Valhalla as well. So in a time where you spend such a lot of time in these RPGs, these open worlds, let me tell you that this is not exactly an open world game. Why? I'm going to get to that in a short bit while I talk about the maps. But there is an element of side quests as well. And what you will notice that as you're progressing through the main quest, the world itself opens up to you. In the beginning, the approach is very linear. But as you progress, the world, the characters, the surroundings, the environments, they all seem to become bigger and bigger. So it expands, it becomes expansive, way more expansive than it is in the beginning. And it's pretty interesting. It's a very interesting touch as to uh, how they have gone with this game because it, it kind of makes you connect with the size and scale of the game in an organic way. So you are not um, shell-shocked <laughs> or you're not overwhelmed because some players who are new to this genre they might be overwhelmed by the sheer size and scale and the magnitude of the game. Sometimes it can be off-putting. I mean, people can just think that, ah, oh, man, there's too much in this game. I'm not going to play it. So what they've done is really intelligent because they've kept the player on a linear path. And then they've given them the option of going here or there as you progress in the game. So it's like hand-holding you in the beginning of the game. And then as you become like a teenager and then an adult person, you're on your own mate so that's the, that's a really intelligently designed game i would say and um, speaking of the design the maps well it's like a russian doll i mean there is a map within a map within a map and what's a, what's really good about these maps is that you don't have to do a lot of backtracking when a quest pops up you can immediately travel to this new destination in fact that's the only way to progress you progress by traveling to this new destination. And of course, you can go back to your previous destinations as well by fast traveling there. So uh, people who really like backtracking, who like expansive open worlds and who like like just roaming around uh, these expansive open worlds, you may be disappointed. But I kind of like it because I don't like roaming around aimlessly. Here, there is a purpose. You go from point one to point two, and it has a purpose. And then you can go back to point one. You can go back to, in fact, point zero or minus one as well. Provided, again, there is a purpose related to it. So that is what is so good about this game's design. And the overall design of the game, the levels, I mean, apart from, you know, the, the structure of the game, the level design of this game is breathtaking. I mean, this is the first title that I've played on PlayStation 5 where, have, where I've literally felt that, yes, next-gen games have actually arrived. Because if you look at the uh, foliage here, the tree leaves, the grass, there is a true depth in them. I mean, the game engine is sophisticated. Uh, the gameplay, I'm going to get to that in a short bit as well. But it's just the overall world, the world design 
is stunning. I mean, the variety that is on offer as well is bonkers. Because you will go from lush green jungles over to uh, like villages, over to abandoned cities or castles. There's so much to see and there's so much to experience here. Uh, so the world building is truly magnificent. And as you progress through the, these expansive worlds, you will, of course, you know, come across many enemy types and the enemy types are also quite uh, varied. So a lot of variety. And uh, if you like variety, like some people say variety is the spice of life, well, you will have a great time here because you're not going to be bored coming across the same type of enemies over and over again. Not only are the world or the levels changing, but so are the enemy types. So that's a really, really good thing. Now, overall, I was really surprised with how much detailing had gone into making this game. Every single pixel pops out. I mean, from the cloth physics to the hair physics, to the tree leaves, to the objects in the distant, um, you could say, areas, everything reeks of polish, shine, and it's mind-blowing. And what is mind-blowing in this game? <laughs> in fact, what is also mind-blowing in this game are the battles. The Whether it's your simple level battles or it's your boss battles, even your boss battles, like there is a mini boss, there is like a mini mini uh, boss and then a boss and then a super big boss, like these kaijus that I was talking about, the icons as they call them in this game. So there are different types of bosses that you will come across and being satisfied is like <laughs> uh, insulting the developers of this game because not only are you going to be satisfied, but you're going to be drooling by the end of it because that's how good this game is. And you're going to call your friends and you're going to you're going to share the experience with them because that's how good this is. I mean, when these boss battles are on display on screen, the particle effects, the character animations, the, um, you could say the cutscenes. Yeah, there are literally cutscenes in the middle of the battle. Now, some people may like it, some people may not, but I think it all ties up beautifully at the end of the day. And what you would also need to do is you will need to upgrade your character as you're progressing in the game because hey, boss battles, you want to make sure that your best is out there. So you have a lot of options here. You have uh, marketplaces where you can buy items. Apart from that, you can upgrade items at Blacksmith. There's also a seller or a vendor where you can purchase things off of her. So there's a lot that you can do in terms of buying, upgrading, selling. So that RPG element is still here, I would say. And Although it's not, um, this aspect has not got a lot of variety as the uh, boss battles or as uh, the other RPGs offer, like something like Assassin's Creed, because I gave that example earlier on, but it's serviceable. But what is really, again, the heart of this game is the boss battles and the amount of thought, the amount of cinematic inputs that have gone into it because the camera angles whether a character is speaking or whether you know these boss battles are happening when to pan the camera when to zoom in when to zoom out where to zoom in from which angle to take it is a spectacle i mean the boss battles in this game it's truly something that you should experience yourself if you can get a hands on the demo get your hands on the demo it's free and I'm sure once you play the demo, you would want to really get your hands on this entire game. There are quick time events as well, which I have not spoken about, but these quick time events also, they are, they are purposefully done. It doesn't feel out of place. It doesn't feel like it's there just to service the game. It's there because it feels right. It's there because you have to press the button at the right time to experience the right thing. And these icons, each of these icons have been craftfully created. I mean, the character design and the amount of detail in each of them is fantastic. Now, only when it comes to Ifrit, I think there is some kind of an inspiration taken from Godzilla. I don't know if you guys would agree to that as well or not, but I think this looks like a fire Godzilla. I mean, to me, 
what are your thoughts just fire godzilla with a bunch of horns <laughs> let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section but that's what i feel um if it looks like a fire godzilla but the other characters as well man the other icons each of them so so good i mean now when i'm looking back at these scenes again i'm awestruck still looking at it the second time in a very short span of time that's how good this game is and that's why you should play final fantasy 16 now the other aspect which i have not even spoken about which you should experience with a bunch of, or a pair of earphones plugged in is the soundtrack it's expected the final fantasy series it will come along with a fantastic soundtrack and this does not disappoint mind blowing now overall i would say this is a fantastic experience overall in terms of gaming and this is truly a final fantasy for the next generation because this is very different to any of the other final fantasy games that i've played i've not played all of them but i've played strangers of paradise the lightning series final fantasy 15 and this stands out in the crowd this has an identity of its own and this in fact i think personally would make the way for the next installments in this particular series what are your thoughts let me know in the comment section but i think for this video i will stop here um if you have liked the content of this video i would greatly appreciate it if you could hit that like and subscribe button and also that bell icon in case you want to get notified with all my latest videos but as far as this video goes well it's a wrap for this one i'll see you lovely folks in my next video until that time i'll say take care stay safe and may god bless you all